Picture this, three library staff members trapped inside the South Charleston Public Library. Aaron, Toby, and Josh, each with divergent tastes, tasked with watching each other's films. Can they survive with their sanity intact? Find out on Real Opposites, a library podcast about movies. Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Real Opposites. I'm Aaron. I'm Josh. I'm Toby. And we are back for our first horror double feature of the season. Uh, this time we did choose movies from Toby. So we have When Evil Lurks and Late Night with the Devil. And I guess we'll jump into When Evil Lurks. Toby, if you want to tell us maybe a little bit about it and why you chose it. All right. So um, for this double feature, I picked um, horror movies about possession that have come out very recently. Um, so When Evil Lurks, I believe, was at least its U.S. release was 2023. 2023. And then um, Late Night with the Devils this year. Yeah. Um, so both of these are great. Um, possession movies, they also have a theme of the main character kind of consistently making the worst decision that they can make every time there's a decision to be made. Very consistently. Um, very consistently in both movies. I just, I really love possession horror because it like, I, it, it touches on a lot of like, I, I don't know, I think there's something inherently scary about... Um, demons, and there's something inherently scary about like I, I I enjoy religious horror in general, so like the idea of like possession uh, is very like spooky to me. Um, when Evil Lurks, uh, watched it when the first time I watched it, I went looking for more of the lore. Um, I just thought that the world that was created in When Evil Lurks was really interesting and exciting, and like you get all these little pieces, but like it's. It, it was just like okay, but you didn't need to know what that was for, like what the instrument was for the movie, right? Not really, but like I wanted to know when I was right. like I was invested in like how demonic possessions work in this world, like what happened to make this like a common knowledge thing and how it worked out, um, and then it just I've seen this movie. Like, I think I've seen it three times now. Um, and it just is like no holds barred on the kills. Like, everything is gruesome and gross and awful. And it's just the and the lead up to the kills is so tense that, like, I just I loved it. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it. Um, but you might not have because it is like it is an Argentinian, it is an Argentinian film. Uh, so it's a foreign language film and it's a little on the like. I, I want to say, like, obtuse. So, like, not everything is very, like, clearly laid out, but I very much enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite films from the last couple of years. So, okay. what'd you think? <laughs> uh, so, I will say I started watching it last night, and maybe I wasn't ready for it, mm -hmm. um, because I, I don't think I realized how maybe uh, dialogue heavy it was, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, shit. I'm going to have to actually fully look at the screen. Yes. <laughs> so um, it was hard for me at first, but uh, the the movie itself is really good. I do feel the same way about you, though, uh, where I'm not uh, familiar with that area's lore about possession. So uh, I, d I, I felt myself yearning to know more about it because it was just like as if, you know, I mean, it'd be the same as our American films. You get a story about possession, and it's just the normal possession we're used to. Well, the mm -hmm. thing about this is, is like everything was created for the like, so it doesn't come out of any kind of folklore. Oh, um, it's actually rooted in um, lies about pesticides in Argentina. Right, this I did. This is see actually that. like a uh, uh, eco like film about like. Yeah. Hmm. poisoning the water and it's killing like it's giving people cancer and it's mm -hmm. doing this it's like the government it's a it's there's an overarching plot of like government indifference to a right. horrible plight I, so, I did see that about the movie but all I, of this is just like a fantasy that's, okay that, that i assume there was, was still cool. some kind of yeah. lure that was involved like with the instrument mm -hmm. um because when the instrument broke i was like i really wanted to know how that worked how, yeah like but What's i will say the there was multiple times 
I was pretty mad at the the main lead. Oh yeah, yeah. um, just <laughs> stupid. One, yeah, stupid. <laughs> stupid. Stupid decision after stupid decision. Yeah, yeah. especially going uh, after the axe. Yeah. yeah, at the end, like it, uh, what? And and never listening. See, like also in this film, there is in both movies there is a woman who knows exactly what's going on and exactly how to deal with it, mm-hmm. and the male leads are like. Not gonna do what she says, right? <laughs> like every time. <laughs> so. so, I wasn't crazy about this. Mm. Um, I appreciate like ambiguity mm-hmm. and uh, like a streamlined plot, but I gotta have something to hold on to. I think it's probably a little too dour for its own good. Mm-hmm. I feel like it, it wants to be a zombie movie and it wants to be a possession movie because there's mm-hmm. this kind of middle ground they're trying to hit. Yeah, I I think some of that kind of the possessions of Iris threw me off yeah, a yeah. little bit. Um, like, wait. So I, I don't know if they're just trying to do too much and not giving you an, enough of a you know they need a lot of backstory, but there's it just seems like oh hey wild shit's happening. Yeah, some of those I I think that this isn't a, a reasonable. I do think that his reactions are. Very dumb looking from the outside, but also like this is a man who's like doesn't ha- like he's kind of has this uh, you know it's his family at stake, and people don't make rational decisions when it's like the people they love, especially yeah. like when it's but it's their... like it's 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 not in like a in like a visceral moment right of, of you know horror it's just like. They're like just calm moments, and then they're just like, "Hey, let's," you know. We're like, "This door says right safety. This door says no safety, horror and terror, and you're gonna die." It's like, I don't know. Let's go this way. Let's go. Let's go to the horror terror. We're gonna die. Yeah. When, by the time we got to the end, I was ready for him to die. Yeah. Um. And and when they're there with the children. And, yeah. and that was the decision that really made me angry because, one, the children have already lied to him twice. Mm-hmm. Why would you believe them? Mm-hmm. Like, you're already yeah. aware that they aren't telling the that truth. children love evil. And then mm-hmm. they, um, and the woman's like, no, don't do it. And she's been right every mm-hmm. time every so time. far. Mm-hmm. And then also, you know, they're like, oh, your son could be fine. Well, you saw what happened to everybody else. Mm-hmm. And you know he's not fine. Like, come on yeah. now. You know he's dead. No. And that moment just made me so mad. I just <laughs> so mad. Like, overall, I I enjoyed the film. I do think the beginning was slow for me, mm-hmm. weirdly. It was slow. Um, And very dialogue heavy mm-hmm. in the sense that it was just, like, almost too much. But at the same time, not getting information. Like, it was right. too much of nothing. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's a lot of filler dialogue. Yeah. That- you know, like you need you need exposition to a certain mm-hmm. extent, right. and pretty much every movie has exposition. But if this didn't feel like exposition; it just felt like I felt like it started the movie. I was like, I'm confused as to what's really going on here. Yeah, that's that's uh, how I felt, and that's why I thought, oh, okay, it's well, because think, it's not an American movie, and I'm not used to the lore. I think you're kind of supposed to be but, confused though, because like your main characters have never really encountered demon possessions either. They've been pretty much exclusively in the cities in the lore of the movie itself. Yeah. So they're like they've heard about it, but they're kind of at a loss of what to do. And then it I think like they everybody were also, knew yeah, what was yeah. happening. Yeah, they yeah, it it didn't seem like anybody was like out of their element. It seemed it like was just they, like they were like, Oh yeah, I've heard of this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it didn't it didn't feel like this was new to them. I needed more. I yeah. Yeah, it needed something. Like honestly, if it had gone for some more explicit like the something with the pesticides of the yes. government or just a different angle. Cause I don't really think this works really well as a possession movie. I think it would have been, it would have worked better. This kind of like a road movie mm-hmm. as a, as a, Infection. as a virus yeah. zombie movie. The, the sheer intensity of the dog scene yeah. for me was like, they kept cutting to this like bulldog. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. The whole time. And you just know, you know, that like it was rubbing its face in the clothes or whatever, mm-hmm. and that like something horrible is gonna happen, and right. it like it really goes for it. I also, and this is gonna sound really callous, but like I do appreciate when horror movies kill 
children. Yeah, they do. Right. They, they don't they, usually they pull the punches. They right. don't usually do that. They didn't give a single up. Um, no, because no. they even had the mom like, the walking and eating his, his uh, yeah. brain as she's like walking with his body in her yeah. hand. It's like that was so so visceral and like just really nails home the point like. There evil is no, doesn't. Yeah, you don't come back, and evil doesn't yeah. discriminate. Evil, right, evil doesn't exactly. care that you're an innocent kid. In fact, yeah. it prefers it. Right. Like you know, I, I did. Um, I did appreciate that because you don't get that in a lot of movies. Same as I mean, every once in a while you'll get like an animal that dies or something like that. Anymore, it doesn't seem like you even get that much. Um, but I don't know the the fact that it did. You know. It spread to everyone, and you know the the kids did die, and they were pretty violent and, and instrumental into, yeah. and also instrumental into the like spreading of the evil, which is right. So fun. Exactly. Um, I this author, this director, um, I can never remember if it's Terrified or Terrifier, but they did another movie. It's not Terrifier. It's not Terrifier. Then it's Terrified. It's a another Argentinian movie where he like there's a kid who's just walked up out of his grave. And it's just sitting in the kitchen. And that that scene is also remarkably tense. He just he I feel like he really knows how to nail like tension of like waiting for that thing to happen and telegraphing it and you're just like waiting for the payoff and it like and still even then the payoff is still he's still good at making it exciting. Yeah. Like I knew that the dog was going to attack the kid, but like the brutality of it and the like dragging her out into the street and the chase mm. that followed and stuff was yeah. a little unexpected and fun. Um I think I think with this one the probably the first half of the movie didn't really pull me in. Mm-hmm. Um I needed more story. I needed a little bit more I think a little bit even though the lore turns out to be made up. Mm-hmm. Uh that a little bit more about that lore, Before I think, would have been good. Just a base. Uh, maybe one person having a little more dialogue that was lore-based or something like that. Yeah. So I think uh, the same as you. I was a little confused. and But I will say halfway through or at least the last bit, I was pretty pulled in. Um, and, and I think I end up overall enjoying this movie. I, I just found it hard to really kind of get into any of the characters. Mm-hmm. Just felt like an excuse to have a a good, you know, some inventive kills. I felt like they mm-hmm. came up with some kills and they'll yeah. wrap around kind of a zombie slash possession mm-hmm. road movie story. And See, I don't know. Um, the the ambiguousness really worked for me. I love that. I, I, I mean, liked I, it. I, I love liked ambiguity, it. especially in a horror movie. Like, it just, it needed something... Like an anchor, some kind of yeah, some together. kind of anchor to just get me into the world. But it just mm-hmm. kind of like it starts off and I'm, they never. It's like there's almost like there's missing a scene at the start, pulls you into the movie. Even like if they give us a news story about like uh, the time when the woman was a was yeah, a, right. there's an exorcist. That, I think feel like something like that would have. It's, it's just a lack of context. Yeah. yeah, I mean the exorcist is a great example. I was just watching yeah. that again. And like the opening, have you seen you've seen The Exorcist, mm-hmm. right? The opening where he's he finds the the piece, you know, the little headpiece, and right, mm-hmm. um, it's all dialogue free, but it kind of it 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 sets you up with the tone, this kind of ominous feeling, mm-hmm. you know, that there's you know there's the the giant Pazuzu statue that he's looking at, and mm-hmm. but it still provides some context. Then you go to to the you know Virginia or to mm-hmm. the D.C. area, and it's you know the movie starts yeah but that opening like if you don't have that opening if you just started the movie in reagan's bedroom and they're hearing thumps in the ceiling it doesn't it's just i I feel like that's how this starts Mm -hmm. it's just like they start here like stuff's going down Mm -hmm. and it's just like okay stuff's going down right i don't know what what that is i don't know what you know so yeah if you just had like a couple minutes of some i wouldn't want something as like uh, run of the mill is like you know a news report or yeah. something like that, but just some incident where like someone else, some previous incident of possession mm-hmm. yeah. that would a just like grab you from the start because there's nothing like especially in a horror movie something to just grab you right at mm-hmm. the start of the movie. It just you know something visceral doesn't have to be the you know the big kill or anything. It just needs to be yeah. something. Um, 
I think memorable. Even if you got what happened to the the exorcist that was coming, like I think I feel like that might have helped. Like yeah, because you know, like they find his body, but like it's not clear because it is the middle of nowhere, which I think is kind of the point. Um, if you know, did he just get attacked by like? dogs like yeah. what you know we're yeah. we're in the wilderness like we don't really know what happened there which is what happened but i mean <laughs> like, it could have been were something possessed dogs. it could have been something like <laughs> like like the opening of the thing where they're yeah. just chasing the dog and you're like what's going on what, here what's happening yeah you know and you slowly you're you're given information right but so. it's that opening part that kind of pulls you in and you're like why are they chasing the dog why are they trying to kill you know him? it's whereas this i feel like they just kind of drop you in mm-hmm. and it's like i'm already confused what movie am i in I agree with you on the fact that, like I said, the first half of the movie, I wasn't really into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it is, like you said, Josh, that they didn't bring me into the world. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't have a connection to any of the characters. I didn't have a connection to the story because I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I, I wasn't pulled in to that lure, to that world. And I think that's where it had... There was a loss of connection to the first half of the movie yeah. for me. I just feel bad for Pedro the whole time. The I think Pedro's the brother. The brother. Yeah, I feel like he's shackled to this idiot. Um, yeah. Whereas I think Pedro would have made more correct decisions if it wasn't for like him just listening to what yeah. his brother said. Um, I I don't know. Like I said, what um, were there any scenes that stood out though? Like in a in a like you know, I, I think um, we've touched on like it is slow. Like I said, I knew like there was a chance that you guys wouldn't be super fans of it, but this is I don't know. I liked it, but I'm also very used to fantasy and like just suspending disbelief until I get into it to a certain like so like I don't need a lot of knowing how the world works to yeah. be like I'm just going with it, um, which is a personal thing. I like I didn't hate the movie or anything. It's just it's if anything, that's just I just wanted more context. Yeah, is is about any well, you know. I think for me, I wanted more, and that's yeah. what makes me like it. Like I was like, I want I want to know more about this. Like I want more. I had the same reaction with the witch though, which we still have not watched. Yeah. Um, in that like I want like there but, it's laid out there and it's all great, but like I want I wanted to know more. The witch. I think. I feel like that one, like it, it provides enough context right at the start. I agree. Like, um, well, it's a, it's a more that that one is you know you understand what a witch is, right? We know we can easily see the time period, right? Um, it's not there's not a lot to set up mm-hmm. in that. Whereas this, and maybe you know in Argentina this is it's not an is- issue, you know. Maybe this is more familiar. I don't yeah, know, um, but I know that a lot of the lore for the world was just made for the film. But I mean, it felt like you could have easily placed this in, you know, 150 years ago in the West, mm-hmm. and pretty much same movie, just trade out cars for yeah. horses and right. Um, so I mean, I think that's the kind of the vibe they were going for. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the effects were good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, uh, that that definitely sticks there out. Was and never most of the an a, there was never an effect in this movie that I was like, that's clearly like. Yeah. Nonsense. Overall, I I don't hate it. I mean, it was it was an all right movie. Yeah, it was all right. I agree. I I can say like I'm glad I could say I've seen this one. Mm-hmm. Um, if it ever comes up in conversation, yeah, I've seen that. Uh, but I don't know that I'd revis- revisit it. Like I said, me. it is better on rewatching. I think once you kind of know what's going on, it's a little better. And I do agree. I think we could have done a little. Like, if there was just a little hint at the beginning, because apparently the rotted are such common knowledge that people are like, I've heard of this, but maybe I haven't seen it. That, um, if we, could, yeah. if it could have been a little bit of common knowledge for us, right? Yeah, I mean, because it, been it, nice. it, I remember <laughs> like, they're talking about that at the start. I'm like, well, what the hell's rotted? Yeah, Is that zombies, yeah. like, cause to me, that that rotted, zombies. if you say somebody's rotted, well, it's like, well, that then they're like dead, zombie. they're yeah. you know, the undead. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think possession when I hear rotted. Yeah, overall, it's okay. Yeah. So, um, Late Night with the Devil um, features da, 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 David Dasmalchian, who I like in almost everything he's ever been in. 
um, is the main guy. He is a talk show host, and he has a possessed girl on the show. And everything really, liter- very quite literally, goes to hell in a handbasket. I don't know. I there was like the feel of this movie. Just they, I think they nailed like the seventies talk show vibe. They did. Yeah. Um, it like th- this movie just it it is. It, I feel like it knows exactly what it's doing, and it just keeps doing it until. Like, yeah, I, w- you know? <laughs> I was super excited to see this <laughs> mm-hmm. um, when it came out in theaters earlier this year. So mm-hmm. I went to see it, and I love. He's a great actor. Um, so it was really nice to see him get like a full mm-hmm. lead role. And I mean, it, this one ticks a lot of boxes. Which, like it really nails what it wants to do. It knows what it wants to do. It sets everything up really clearly. Um, I like the Bohemian Grove shit. Yeah, like, and all the great. like, you know, the 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 documentary about Jack, Jack Delroy that plays, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. explaining his rise and fall, and mm-hmm. and then like when they when he's got the guests on the show, it's 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 very easy to watch. It's very fun. It's very funny. You know, it constantly kind of just spirals out of control. You don't. I mean, the only thing which is they kind of write themselves into a corner mm-hmm. by the end of the movie, but at the same time. It's a possession movie. I don't know where else you'd really go. Yeah, where are you going? Right. Other, than, <laughs> other than just say, oh, it was all a crock, mm-hmm. which I don't want because that I want, I want a possession movie. So give me the possession movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um. I, I, it was fun to watch it again. The cast is great. The little girl that plays the Lily. Yeah. Uh, li- yeah, was it Lily? Ingrid Torell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she she's great. It um, was her debut film. Is it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, she did a great job. Um, David Desmalkian is terrific. Like, mm-hmm. just commands the screen. And I buy, like, I buy him as like a seventies. Oh, one hundred percent. Smarmy, host. yeah. Smarmy, like he's, yeah. I, I love the Devil's Due part of this, where yeah. it's like it, it comes to be. Sorry for anyone. No, if you're listening to our podcast, we're gonna spoil the movie. Uh, is that it comes to be like he made a deal. And yeah. this is it. Like yeah. this is this is coming for your soul. Like it doesn't really matter that you have the possessed girl on this show. Yeah, that's just how we're getting to you. Yeah, I, this is a movie that when it was when it came out in theaters, I was really wanting to go see it, and then it, I kind of forgot that it existed, like I do with most things. Um, so when this was the selection, I was very very excited to watch this, <laughs> and I can say that I'm so glad I did. I absolutely loved. I'm this so movie. glad. <laughs> Absolutely love this movie. This movie was right down my alley. Uh, it was like a slow burn, but in a good way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I like those kind of movies. As weird as I am about things being slow, a slow movie that makes sense, I, it really just pulls you in. It felt like you were just watching a talk show at points. Yeah, I mean, it does. Like, there's this extended sequences where you're just. Watching yeah. the I talk mean, show, and right? Like documentaries, anyway. So I thought this would hit for you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you get that feeling as well, and um, yeah, man, I I just this one did it for me. I really enjoyed this one. This is something that I put on, and I absolutely couldn't look away, mm-hmm. even though it was a slow burn. It had something going on at all times uh, that you just couldn't look away. It's got so much style, I yeah. think, is what really did it for me, is I felt like I'm like, oh, I'm in a different place in time when I'm right. watching this, and, and it feels right. Yeah, like, like y'all said, it, it, you know, at times it feels, I mean, not at times, but it does feel like they've really captured the 70s TV show, and at times I did feel like I was just watching, mm-hmm. you know, a talk show that was having a lot of crazy things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like the, I love the just when shit hits the fan, like when the, it's it's time for like the show to like go on and yeah. like, oh, this guy freaked out on stage and like you just see and Desmalchian pulls off that like, you feel bad for him almost for a little bit, but you also like, he pulls off that like, fame is all like kind of I, I need I need this to work yes. I need this person like you know it's this like desperation of like I need to keep being successful keep being famous keep being, and I, I know my deal's coming due and it's like yeah the fear and also but the drive to like try to ignore it or like he pl- he pl- he's so good and he's a big horror fan too which helps I think yeah <laughs> didn't he, he hosted like uh one of their 
hort documentary shows on yeah Saturday, he also oh, it pre- okay. appears pretty often in that like um the big 80s oh yeah um, in like the, the into in, darkness in search of darkness yeah, yeah. In search of darkness um, um yeah i mean it was just great to see him get a big meaty role mm-hmm. and he really nails it and uh, yeah he did and like the thing i like, like i like seeing like the little clips of like just the normal talk show they kind of do at the yeah. start of like you know there's like animals and whatever, right? You know, it really normal stuff you you'd up. see on Carson or you know. Yeah. Um, it was really fun. That I mean, it just it was a fun throwback. Yeah, it, it was. It, it's kind of the movie like I grew up like horror movies. I grew up watching mm-hmm. like Creep Show or something where it's yeah. you know there's scare like you know there's scary parts there's horror parts but it's just I mean it's it's. You know, they don't really get to the possession part till way into the movie. Yeah. But everything up till then is honestly better than the possession part. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, it never, it's always entertaining. It's always engrossing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really like this. And I, I think compared to when evil lurks, I think that what we were talking about not being pulled in, I think this movie does really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get pulled in with those. Right away. Yeah. The Sorry. first, and all it is is like a little bit of history through seeing his talk show mm-hmm. through yeah. the years. And it just sets you up to feel like you're watching, okay, now I'm watching a live version <laughs> yeah, of this. It's almost like you're watching like one of those VH1 behind the music. Yes, right. exactly. Documentaries at the start. Exactly. So they're, like, when, the, when, when some of the like guests first appear in the show, I was like, oh, I don't know if they got the best actors for this. But then I, I really warmed up to them, and they, everyone yeah. did a great job. Um, I think they, I think they're supposed to come off a little cheesy. Yeah, yeah. and they, they, some of the, some of that um, dialogue is maybe a little too on the nose, mm-hmm. or maybe played up a little too much. Mm-hmm. But, um, but those are very, those are very small criticisms, and I don't, they right. don't really matter because the rest of the movie is so good. Um, I really love that they went like full like poltergeist light at the end though. Um oh, yeah. with the like head peeling open and it's just like this really bright, like almost like eldritch kind of moment there. No, I, I, like, I, oh, yeah, I dug so that. Good. And I think one of the things that I did enjoy was the Carmichael character mm-hmm. who was the skeptic. Yeah. Skep- mm-hmm. Skeptic. Skeptic. Mm-hmm. Uh I, it pulled the movie together because it was like, here's a segment, but then here's him saying how how fake that is, and then here's a segment, and then back to him giving his opinion. Um, and and I thought it was neat that they based uh, that on the real life James Randi, who was a talented magi- magician who became a famous psychic debunker and started an institute that offered a large reward to anyone that could reproduce their supposed paranormal powers in huh. controlled conditions. That was and a big thing. Even even on his physical appearance, like they based the whole character on him. I love that and he just drops to his knees and is like basically like Satan I'm yours at the end <laughs> and pulls and then, out the check. And then like, like and okay, like, you and can then have like it. yeah, it's like dude. <laughs> I like I love that switch of he's just being and then he's like so desperately afraid. It doesn't yeah. do him any good. Yeah. It's so that part was perfect. It was. It was an intense <laughs> scene. And when he pulled out the check, it just made me chuckle. Because uh, really you just watch this girl get her throat slashed in the middle of the air, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you're like, mm, maybe this check will help. <laughs> I'm just like, but, sir. Um... And of course, through the through the movie, like he kind of irritated me. But he he's supposed to. Yeah, no. I that plays Carmichael does such a good job, and he wasn't supposed to be him. He got the part four days before they started filming. Oh wow! I mean, at the end of the day, like when when I saw it in theaters and you know, the movie ended, I was like, huh, I could watch more of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's I, how I felt. I, about I, it. I want like more behind the scenes stuff with Jack and yeah the crew and um. I mean, I don't think I don't really know how you'd sequelize this. I'd almost be down but... for a prequel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, about him and the and the, the grove. grove. Yeah, yeah, I I'd go for that. I always like some good like you know celebrity cult stuff. Yeah, it's always fun. I like I always like a cult in a horror movie. Like I, that I is I I'm just I like the cults. Yeah. <laughs> like... Big fan of the cult. <laughs> Which I mean, you I could am. also They're so fun. You could also do a spinoff uh, with the cult that the girl survived. Yeah, a cult. So I see two possibilities ha- here. Have you seen Maxine yet? 
Mm, no. That's the one I have not seen. I've not seen. I've There's seen both the others, but I haven't watched it. It's a great moment at the end. Okay. okay. I do need to watch that one because I've seen the first two. See, it I, just came out today. Yeah. On Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. DVD. Cool. I just, I do like. Do we have it yet? Yes. Sweet. I like a good cult subplot in a horror movie. Like, I yeah. I, I love that. Like, a little, a little bit of, um, oh. but again, I like religious horror, right? And that's yeah. what cults ultimately, like, really feed on is the same kind of stuff that religious horror feeds on is, like, there is a certain, um, like, I don't know, brainwashing element. Right. Madness there, and it's, I, like... Possession movies are probably my least favorite. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I remember you saying that before, but possession... Well, see, they're my favorite because they are more realistic. For, for some me. reason, for me, I think growing up... They're more realistic? I yeah. believe in all that, so... Yeah. I was raised... Okay. Yes, well, more yeah, realistic. I was raised um, very religious, so, like, possession movies, and they hit for me. Like, okay. every time. I don't know. I was not, yeah. so they don't. And also, I feel like <laughs> it's, it's a genre that, like, peaked with The Exorcist and... um it's not really going. Like you're not going to hit that again. Huh. Like, and they all. I would love if somebody did though. <sighs> I mean, there's been some good ones. I'm not saying mm-hmm. there haven't. But right. Yeah. Like, you need a different angle. So you need something like Evil Dead or where yeah. it's, it's possession, but it's the style is very different. Mm-hmm. Right. And um. I think it's but just like, like a straight. The works. But just like a straight serious uh, possession movie, like they're all at one way or another. I like the, be... the exorcism of Emily Rose. Mm-hmm. That was okay. That was like that was like a courtroom movie, almost more more yeah. than anything. But yeah, no, it was a solid movie. I like that. Yeah. I like that one too. I'm not saying there's not good ones. I'm just saying like right. of all the genres, I feel like it's probably the most played out. Yeah, and the most where er, most of the movies are heavily derivative of mm-hmm. The Exorcist. Like oh yeah, like yeah. there's really. Nothing comes close. So what I like about both of these is they actually kind of steer, steer a little bit clear of like gnostic religious, yeah, that, which I think works uh, for possession. Yeah, uh, that's why I like this one so much because it's a, a completely different angle. Yeah, yeah, to the possession. It was. You need like a really uh, like some sort of a stylistic angle or a really great location, mm-hmm. um, like it, that. Some some something different to just yeah, separate a little story it from, angle that makes you know it like I don't know how many like Russell Crowe's been in, like three of them in the mm-hmm. last couple of years like exorcism movies mm-hmm. yeah. where he's like you know it's just the same like Catholic priests and like, right. you know, it's like okay I did this but there's a know. lot of them but I think when they're done well they're good but yeah, I, I mean, like um but also like for me like the type taps into one of my like core fears like body snatchers like. Body snatchers terrify me, and I yeah. think possession movies work in the same way. The idea yeah. that something is wearing the face of someone you love, and is like suddenly very invested in everything and in, in harming you. Right. Um, that is one of my core. Like this scares me. So I think possession movies work because it's like you don't want to believe. Yeah. That that person now is something other. So, on that topic, what? Because possession is also one of my favorite um, forms of horror. What what would you say is one of yours? What Josh? is your favorite form of horror? Oh, my favorite form of horror. Yeah, um, it's John John Carpenter's genre, right? No, <laughs> I, I think you have to pick like uh, slasher, I mean, like, ghost. I, like what I is, like. I mean, I is I, there a trope that, that is you, yours? Yeah. Is there a trope? A type of villain. That hits for you. I think No, not like- really. I mean, I like all all subgenres oh, okay. in horror. Um I probably lean more towards the kind of like supernatural existential kind of horror. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I also like like body horror mm-hmm. and like the sci fi horror slant, like the thing or event horizon or okay. um That's but fun. I would say it would go more towards stuff like these things that are older yeah. than mm-hmm. us and this is like it's kind of like even something like the fog, where it's just it's a ghost story, mm-hmm. it's a classic yeah. ghost story. But there's enough to be like, well, where are they? Like, there's he leaves leaves you gives you just enough information, and your mind fills in a lot of the rest. Nice. Right. Um. So I like. I mean, I, I like all kinds, but it, I mean, it would generally be more towards the supernatural mm-hmm. slant than than slashers. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they're like. Every other day, I'm wearing a Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth <laughs> shirt. Well, it's because those um, are great, right? Like, yeah, I mean, the best. Like, but yeah, like the, the the slasher genre. Uh, I I mean, I don't remember the last really great one that was made. They're too like steeped in the past, 
which was you know, with you know the 80s yeah mm-hmm. which is that's the you know the heyday they haven't really tried to like push push it forward in any meaningful way so that's, that genre is kind of dead for me that, that is something i would love to see a resurgence of like i would love to slasher. see like a good new completely new yeah slasher series yeah, uh, because that's not something we have nowadays. But yeah, like a like a scream, a Halloween, a, you know, any of those. I, I, even I mean, if the, it's just a one off movie, it would be so hard to do. I it mean, now. scream. I know, but scream's really the last one where you can say, yeah, that's slasher. I mean, they've tried with right. like Terrifier, which God, I haven't watched any. Of I, I I actually I, I actually I, watched most of the first one this morning, and I was like, okay. what. I detest art. Was it that bad? Um, They're they're terribly made. Mm -hmm. It's just like they have like their own cult following. They do. I mean, it's just gore hounds that just like want to see gore, and it's like okay, but like there's there's not like a good story. There's no there's no story. This is like these two girls at a diner, and then Art the clown shows up, and then he kills them, and then he just kidnaps them, and then it's like kills multiple (laughs) other people. It's okay, okay, cool. What are you saying? This doesn't say anything, right? You know, right. Uh, that one, Art like the it. Clown, fits a very specific genre. Like, I love gore. The, the, when Evil Lurks, like, that turned my stomach, but, like, in a, good, like, in a, like, I love seeing this, like, kind of way. Yeah. Well, it's the buildup. Yeah. You know. Art the Clown just, uh, there's a very specific kind of gore that I think is not necessarily, like, mean-spirited. Like, th- this story isn't serving any other purpose besides to just, put people in the most horrible situation yeah. possible and it not like and it n- not mean anything mm-hmm. um and and art the clown does that for me and the sadness does that for like the sadness I, was uh, abominable uh like it's <laughs> just yes like the, the it, it that went too far um and like art the clown for me i'm well, just like this is just mean spirited for no other reason than like this is this yeah. is made for teenage edge lords like i don't yeah, have another much. way around like that yeah it's just like you i mean the less is more. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to gore, most unless you're making something like Evil Dead or Dead Alive, where you're just going so and it's, it's fun. It's so th- there's a there's a jovial sense of humor, mm-hmm. you know, right. and they're really just having fun with it and like, yeah, look at how crazy this is. Uh, but like the sadness, it's just like, like, like I don't know what I'm watching. Like, there's you're not telling me anything about any like any like there's no commentary, social commentary or. It's just gore for gore's sake. It's 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 boring to watch, and it leaves my mind nowhere to go. Right. It's just showing me everything. Like there's a great moment in uh you know several movies, but I'll use like The Hitcher as an example. Mm-hmm. Is when the, when the movie was done, and I don't want to spoil anything, but like there's there's this big moment that they build to, mm-hmm. and people filled in what they saw. Right. They didn't, oh, okay. and they didn't shoot any of it. That's even the- and, and people came up to the director Robert Harmon after the screening, and they were like, "I can't believe you did that." He mm-hmm. was like, oh, "I didn't do it. Like well, that, we don't show you any of that in the movie. It's just implied through a sound, through sound effects and mm-hmm. editing. Like, yeah. and it's the same with Psycho. There's very little, like in the shower scene, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the violence is in your head, and that's that. That is what leaves a lasting impact because that that gives you an emotional relationship with the film. Yeah. It's not just the film just hitting you over the head, the head with buckets of corn syrup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's like even like Hostel is extremely gory, right? The first one. We're going to talk the first one. It's yeah. Extremely gory. But there's a lot of things in that that are not actually shown. And like I've seen the Eli yeah. thing with Eli Roth where he's like, we didn't show most of the gore that people complain about. He's yeah. like, we that wasn't actually in the movie. Mm-hmm. It's just where people's heads fell in. Or the second ankle break in Misery. Um, oh yeah, yeah which yeah. doesn't actually happen like yeah. it's not yeah. shown but like you that's swear good you saw it. it's very right. good such a good um, movie and I, a great book and God, gore can be theme. done and shown and be great but like also there comes a point where i like i feel like you're just indulging like i feel like there there is a point where it just feels like the director is indulging something dark and violent within themselves yeah. and like that kind of carries through into the film where you're well, just like someone here thinks this is I don't know. I mean there's no to me like, there's no technique. No. Right. There it's just it's just lazily put up on screen. Mm-hmm. There's no sen- there's no personality. It's just it's just morose and ugly and you know even something like you know Maniac. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen Maniac, seen Maniac. the original? Mm-hmm. 
like that is that is a dark movie and it is yeah. very graphic but it's like it's like the you know kind of like the slasher version of taxi driver mm-hmm. like there's it still has something to say and it has an amazing central performance from uh joe spinell yeah uh but I feel like they somebody was like who's like a big fan of that. It was like, hey, let me make my version of something like that, and then then it's just. But they didn't have it, anything to say. It, it's basically like they just filmed a really gory haunted house. Yeah, I think with horror movies, it it's the same for me as any other movie or any TV show that I watch. I need character development of some sort mm-hmm. to feel for that character, and I need somewhat of a story. Right. For sure. I don't want just gore to be gore. Just yeah. like I don't like nudity for the nudity's sake. Well, the- like, if nudity drives the movie, if gore drives the movie, right? yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like it just for no reason. Well, that's like, I- I'm okay with like... I'm I'm even okay with things like having a super bleak like ending or like for the violence or the evil to be somewhat senseless, but then I have to care about who it's happening. Right, exactly. Right, like so, like uh, the strangers, like uh, the original strangers. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, you're gonna clarify that again too. The original strangers. I've not seen. The is original. the like oh well. It's a good one. I need to go back I, and watch it. I feel I've bad because first. in order to I've talk about it, one. we're gonna spoil it. Um, I mean, I've seen the new one. Oh well, that's a horrible experience for you. New one. Why would you watch the new one and not the anyway? The 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 Listen final. Listen to us chastise the, Aaron. For the final great noise. reveal of the that's strangers right. is when they're like, you know, why have you done this to us? And it's like because you were here. Yeah. And it's like. Just that, that kind of senseless evil is great when you care about who it's happening to. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's I will say, like, watching the new one, um, and the only reason I saw the new one was because I wanted to see a horror movie and it was in theaters. Mm. Like I saw it on the plane. But um, there is that urge, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, you know, I'll get to like a part, a certain part of the year. There's not really a lot of horror movies coming out, and be like, man, I just want to see a horror movie. I right. Horror movie. I wish there was like a good horror movie out. It's my favorite thing to see in theaters. <laughs> well, that's that's every but, every time we're like sitting down to watch a movie at my house. I'm like, what haven't we seen? Which is getting hard. Like it's getting difficult to yeah. find things I haven't seen that are decent. Um, but what yeah. I was saying is that with the new strangers, <laughs> uh, the the new strangers, it it has obviously the same story, but. I could care less about those people. They're dumb. Mm-hmm. Just like yeah. the guy yeah. in When Evil Lurks. The, he, they were that dumb. <laughs> that is a real problem in modern horror. Yeah. Is either, like, it's really hard to find, like, a human, like, a identifiable human characteristics within, yeah. mm-hmm. within the characters. Either they make really dumb decisions, which is not, not abnormal for a horror movie. Right, because like well, you said, you're not in your normal brain, but yeah. I need to believe that's the reason you're yeah. making stupid, not just... Yeah, yeah, dumb. no, no, I get Yeah, no, I get that. Or they're just really, really annoying. Yeah. Right, and, <laughs> and you just want and to... And I die. just, like, I don't care about you. I don't yeah. care about your problems. Exactly. Um, you know, like, 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 a, like a teenager in Friday the 13th, like part four, for instance, like, mm-hmm. which is probably the best one, like their interactions... Seem genuine. Yes. Okay. Like they seem like friends. Like that. I, I don't know. I buy what's going on. Mm-hmm. It allows me to be like, when they die, I'm like, oh man, that sucks. That sucks for that dude. <laughs> that sucks. I haven't made it like, to that one, but I am working on the Friday the Thirteenth. You're working on okay. Nightmare on Elm Street. I can't believe you. Just, oh. you just did that. I do that. All we'll the cut time. that. You are banned. We'll from cut the podcast. that. <laughs> we'll no. Cut that. Um. But. <laughs> Friday the 13th Fri- is Jason. Did I said Fri- Friday the 13th. You did, yeah. I said Friday the 13th. I think I was just excited that I was working on something. You're working on the Nightmare on Elm Street. I, <laughs> or, I the ni- or the or the Nightmare said, movies. Like I thought you said Freddy, probably. <laughs> like you know the characters in Nightmare. Like I like those characters, yeah. especially in the first. You know, <laughs> I mean, really, in all of them, I, I like the yeah, um, you know, the teenagers and the young people. Um, but God, it's like I watched the I saw the TV glow. It's like a newer. Oh, I saw that advertised. Is it not good? I just no. Okay. Uh, I was like watching paint dry. It was like watching. I don't know if it's this is not a horror movie, but Past Lives, which was like the big acclaimed, ro- like kind of romance, uh, not really romance. Well, I don't know, uh, drama. romantic drama, dramedy kind of thing. Two most boring characters. Like I wouldn't even want to go out to lunch with you. Yeah. Like you <laughs> even if you bought lunch, I'd be like, No, you're boring the to watch. Worst. You have there's Oh my God. 
Uh, like just just write a damn character yeah. that is like a little lively, a little like I can see myself in that. Um, I mean, there, I saw the TV go was like the horror version of that, where it was just like, can you just die? And they just wouldn't die. And then it just got comical by the end of the movie. I got about yeah. 10 minutes into it and turned it off because, like, literally nothing had happened. And I saw the TV. Well, you didn't miss like, much. Nothing. Well, it just feels like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like Skidmarink got all that, like, buzz. And that's a horrible experience from start to finish. I, I got, I only, I, I will say, I can't actually say it's a horrible experience from start to finish because I watched 30 minutes and, again, nothing had happened. And I was like, I'm done. Like, I can't sit here and watch yeah. Dutch Angles for 30 minutes. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? No, like, I get it. Like, I, get I can't. It. I can't look at a door frame for thirty minutes and be and yeah. be invested and scared. That, 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 that's um, what I saw the TV go. And that's like a th- there's like a theme in horror movies where it's just like slow. Why are we like we make everything so slow? Everything is just kind of feels like they're using the same like camera work, same like lighting. Everything's like some sort of version of like a neon. And like this very like I like the phrase bisexual lighting <laughs> is what I've seen applied lately because lighting. it's all blue and pink. Yeah, Neon. yeah, pretty yes. much. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and like no one, like no one really like it feels like they're alive. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Yeah, like you know, like some kids, like in a in a you know, a slash, like hey, we're just trying to go to the beach and get laid. Like yeah, yeah. okay, that's, that's what, what they. Yeah, I, that I get sense. that. Right. Um, right. Where these where are these characters like? No, I'm really. Did you watch this show when we were kids? Do you remember it? What if it was real? <laughs> well, and the and thing like, is, is the that's already been done several times and better. Like, yeah. there's a Shutter series called Channel Zero. That, hashtag Shutter. Hashtag Shutter. I don't know. That's <laughs> actually really good, and it's based on a creepy pasta that's based in West Virginia from oh. the inner and from the. What was this called? Um, it's called Channel Zero. Channel Zero. Um, the first season is a, from a internet is based on internet creepypasta about a show that they saw as kids, and it's like, and it like children going missing, and that's what the ultimate like was ultimately about. Um, and this child psychologist is back in his hometown, and he's like, the show has come back on the air, and oh, okay. like kids are starting to go missing again. Uh, it's very good, but it is based. It is based uh, between Huntington, Ironton, and I can't remember what the other like third city is. But it's like uh, the TV station oh, okay. covered that area, so it is based in like the West Virginia, Ohio, like Kentucky, like, probably. Yeah, area. So it's Let's pretty see. neat. The tri-state uh, area. The tri-state area up there. Yeah. Well, it has to be better than I saw the TV go. It is. <laughs> it is. Um. It, like this thing is like I just make it fun. It's a horror movie, and like it doesn't yeah. have to be fun. Like you can make it serious, and well, it's it'll like, be enjoyable. Well, it's to like watch. something like you know the the thing is like it's downbeat and it's mm-hmm. very. I love watching this thing with new people, and they're like, "Don't kill the dog," and you're like, "The dog, the dog needs to." Die. <laughs> like... Yeah, I mean, it's like it's 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 not a happy movie, but it's so entertaining and yeah. engrossing. And like that's fun. It's fun yeah. to. To feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm being manipulated. I'm being played with. I'm, uh, I'm going on this ride, versus you know, hey, you ever feel depressed? Yeah, and it's and it's fun to like. Give, give me ninety minutes. I'll give you some more of it. <laughs> and we got and like I mean, we talked about this. We touched on this last podcast that we don't love the new um, focus on like people's personal trauma when oh, it doesn't yeah. serve the story. Yeah, and it's right. like that has become such a thing in horror. And I get like you want to say something interesting with your horror movie. And I, and okay. Just make it count. Uh, okay. Yeah. But like a lot of times when we make good art, it says something whether we intend what it says or not. Nightmare 2. Mm-hmm. Great example. Which I have Great seen. Example. Which, which, because yeah. that is watch. actually what I'm watching. Um, <laughs> I. So yeah, this, that's our own first male scream queen, and yeah. it's and that has a lot of like subtext about like living as like a a, a, a like queer person and yeah. like a lot of like um all that is great. laid out a lot there. of angst a about, lot of like, angst about that and the, like, about the person inside of inside, you coming yes. out. Yeah. yeah, literally, and, <laughs> and it's like literally, and, and yeah, and it's done so well, and it's not. It, it is done, but like it, it's, it's almost it, like it's not intentionally done, yeah, right? Yeah, like, no, it, it, like, it yeah. feels like they kind of, uh, 
it feels almost subversive at that. I mean, I, I, at that point when it came out almost 40 mm-hmm. years ago, yeah, it's just like, man, this movie's really gay. Yeah. yeah. Like, super gay. Was this and like, did they feel, mean to do yeah, this? Yeah, it's just like, hmm. This is weird. You um, like it's not, like, it's not. It's not what you. Back ex- then, you wouldn't think so. It's not what you expect out of a Nightmare on Elm Street sequel. Right. But I mean, you're. I mean, if you think about it, it's like they're. The whole point is you're examining fears of teenagers. Yeah. And that's a, like sexuality is a big fear. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, what am I? Am I? I'm awkward. I'm weird. Mm-hmm. And then you know, does that make me a monster? Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, yeah. and can someone prey on that and, and create a monster? But out at of the it? same time, then there's also little yes. Freddy dogs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh my god! I totally forgot about that. That was yeah. one of my favorite parts. Uh, like like it, I was like, like it, "What?" It's still wrapped up in this like entertaining, formulaic, yes, but like fun slasher movie. Yeah, I like, I watched the I documentary it was on great. that. Um, no, and and my like film studies class, uh, my women's and gender studies. Is that class, also on so Shutter? About it, Scream Queens. Uh, yeah, Scream Queens. Yeah, is it really? Yeah. On it might be. Yeah, yeah. I want to watch it. Good. Yeah. But there's always, I mean, that's the thing with horror and, I mean, I guess any movies in general, but especially horror, you latch on to something in it and that's what sticks with you. And no matter how weird it is, like the ring when the girl is in the closet at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I still see that. I still see that. That, that, that I mean, it can be the littlest thing, but it will stick with you, that, man. And that's like, what, four seconds of the movie, maybe. Yeah. And that stuck with me. Very I mean, quick. it's still sticking with me. I could still see that image. Oh, I can close my but eyes like, and for, to see it. For a couple of days, I was like, damn, that was creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I closed my eyes for like three days, that's all I saw. <laughs> Like Mir- that yeah. image was seared into my eyelids for some reason. Mirrors and bathtubs get me. Like I don't oh, like yeah. like that one. Like both yeah. of those. Like in a dark in the right mood in a dark room. I don't like. I don't like either. Um, and that's the good thing about yeah. horror is you know there's something for everyone. I think. Yeah, there <laughs> is. I mean, to get yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's always something in any genre. Yeah, that you can. That's true. So. I, I guess overall, the the when evil lurks, we know you love. I it. love it. Y'all were kind of meh. 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 You're meh. I I enjoyed the ending of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, or uh, somewhat. Uh, I would. I think it's one that people could watch. I I would not recommend it, but I don't think I'll do another wa- uh, watch through. But I did. I enjoyed it. I would say it does get better on rewatches. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Well, I also yeah, watched I the could... Joe Bob with it too, which was oh, okay. fun and entertaining I too. I, I didn't realize he had a Joe, Joe Bob had. It was part of his. Like should have watched that one. It was part of the marathon that he just did. The like the um, the latest one. Yeah, the latest one. Okay. No. And then late night with the devil. Yeah. Oh yeah, big thumbs up. I think everyone liked that. Two thumbs up. I think it's two six, enthusiastic six thumbs, thumbs up. up across the board. That one's great. Oh, I was gonna be able to add that. Mel. You had it this time. Yeah. Mm. Now I'm sad. You took that away from me. I'm sorry. Me. <laughs> let's make a let's make a horror movie about that. Thumbs up. <laughs> about the thumbs up. About the the inability to correctly count <laughs> thumbs up. That's that's eldritch horror right there, right? Ho- like there's just you. always an extra thumb. <laughs> Toby didn't let me count the thumbs my yeah. life was ruined yeah. <laughs> and i relive that moment yeah, i'm gonna tell day. you about it for an hour and a half, <laughs> hour and a half. <laughs> okay yeah. so i think we've reached the part in the episode where it's time to turn on that uh movie generator there it goes that wonderful machine sound and i think we're gonna have toby pick something out of there for our next double feature horror podcast all right it is The Craft and the Faculty, 90s horror based in high school. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. That's mine. <laughs> That's yours. Uh, these are really? both great. I'm shocked. <laughs> I like The Faculty. So I do. I like The Faculty. I've always wanted to talk about The Craft on the podcast. And I didn't expect The Faculty. That's yeah. Good. That's good, a good, good one. So, with the faculty, I remember seeing it when I was younger, or at least parts of it, and really liking it. Well, you're talking The Thing, and it's... but. But I'm going to have to, like, I don't remember it. So I'm excited to rewatch it. Okay. Um, and then The Craft is one of my favorite movies of all time. So I thought, 90s horror, I mean. About. Yeah. Uh, but I am super excited that, <laughs> that my double feature got pulled. Um, 
because the I just I love the craft the and I'm going to get There's to talk funny. about it. Yeah. Um, and I'm really excited to rewatch the faculty. So the faculty is great. The faculty's very I, good. Yeah, I've the watched it a few is, years ago. The again. craft is always fun. So and it gives right. me an excuse to buy the four new 4K discs they put out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's okay. An odd movie to get a new 4K release. It is hey, really like, good, that, but like <laughs> the Howling Two got a 4K release. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing times we live in. Right. That's um, true. That's true. Okay. So I guess just uh, join us next time. Which for... will be on October 31st. Yeah. Join us on Halloween. Yeah. Uh-huh. For our last horror double feature. For now. Uh, for the craft and the faculty. And until then, I'm Aaron. I'm Josh. I'm Toby. And this has been The Real Opposites.